Pentecost. And it is also God's work, our hand Sunday, so it's our chance to do something with what we've been given. And it's the beginning, our, our reboot of the narrative lectionary. So we are using a new uh, lectionary year, and that's in the back of your bulletin. You can just go through that. Um, I did want to announce before we get started too much that we do have a new soprano. <laughs> so we have a new singer, um, Leah Inger, right? Did you keep this way? Okay. So we're starting with the renewal of baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Amen. God of the whole universe, you create light with the sun and the moon and the stars. You command streams and rivers and oceans. You formed mountains and valleys and populated the earth with all manner of living things. Meet with us here in this place so we can see the vastness of creation and the magnificence of our Creator. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood, you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea, you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life, and above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And I invite you at some point in the day to just take the water of baptism and just remind yourself that you're baptized. You can maybe when you're coming up for communion, just make a sign of the cross with that water. And now the blessing of hands. This is also God's work, our hands Sunday. So hold up a hand. Hold up both. No, there's one. One is good. Blessed are you, Holy One. You hold us in your hands. Be with us this day. Bless our hands that we might hold others as dearly as you hold them. Use our hands and hearts to bring healing to the earth and comfort to those who struggle. For the sake of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with still being careful, we can make a sign of peace. We can make a sign of the cross. We can wave. Peace of the Lord be with you. Peace of the Lord be with you. Our gathering song is When Long Before Time, the Singer and the Song. The choir will help us.
You may be seated as we continue with our song of the day. We're going to sing responsibly with the choir that's back.
deep sleep to fall upon a man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord. My young friends are welcome to come forward. I have a project. So it is God's work, our hands, Sunday. And what are some big things you can do with your hands? What can you do to change the world with your hands? Maybe not just you, but lots of people. What can you do for a good deal? Build a house. Yeah, go build a house. You'd be like, boom, boom, boom. Did you bring hammers today? No, no. I'm probably not going to do that today. Um, what are some other big things we can do? You can write. Okay, that is over here. You actually, you think, 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 you got it. Okay. Um, so, do you remember a little while ago, we made some cards? Does this look familiar? So we made cards, and we made a lot of cards, and I've been sending them to some of our homebound members every once in a while, and I thought, this is, writing is a really powerful thing. It doesn't have to be giant building a house for somebody. One of the ways we can use our hands is to let somebody know that we're thinking about them, that we care about them. Sometimes getting a card in the mail is better than a house for some, you know, just the idea like, oh, I needed that today. I needed to know that somebody's thoughts are mine. So I have some of our cards, and then I wrote down the names of some of our homebound members. What we're going to do is put them on the back. I want you to help me do this. Um, I'll give you the cards. Okay, because some of them will go on one side. There's two tables in the back, and, and then we're going to decide who gets which card. So, I'll be doing that, and we have pens too. We want to make sure everybody gets a chance. So anybody who would like to sign any of these cards, they're going to be sent to people who can't make it to church. And some people can't make it to church for a long time, and there's a few people who just for a little while are not able to come to church, but they miss it. And so here's one, one name is Glenn, Glenn Dean. He's moved away. So we're going to put a card here. One, one of you can put a card there for Glenn. And then we'll put some pens at each of these tables. Yeah, and some of them have some names in them and some of them do not. And then we have Carol Smith. She has not been able to come to church for a little while, but just not been here for a while. Helen Kent is one of our um, people who usually comes to worship with us. And these, some of these people I get to see every once in a while before bring them communion. And then we the cards. Maybe you'll go to the other table for the press. Andy, you are this piece to come every week and he includes people who come who haven't said good morning. It's great. Barbara Gaddis, for a long time, has been living in a nursing facility, so we want to remember her. One of our friends is Margaret, who has not been able to come to church for a little while. We hope she comes back soon, so we'll put that there for her. And then I have a different kind of a card, and this is going to be our Minister of Music, Joanne Moore. She's here, but we wanted to have a car card for her so people can let her know that they're thinking about her. She might be a little bit sad right now because her stepmom died, and so this is a way, when we send people a card, it lets them know that we care about them. So we have that card. Do you guys want to sign some cards? I have one more. Can you open another one? We'll put it on this Okay, David Gorshbach was our last name. We'll put it over here. You can see that one you like. Do you guys want to sign one? Because some of them you might have already signed because we started this as a project.
project. Miss Bailey was working with you. Yeah. Yeah, you can pick the best car. We had all kinds of different cars. in the back in case anybody needs one. So um, you can be signing the cards and the rest of us are going to be praying for these cards and for everybody who signs them. So whatever I say, I want the whole congregation to respond and reply or repeat what I say. Dear God, use our hands to bring comfort. Dear God, use our hands to share love. Dear God, use our hands to show we care. Amen. And so I want to thank all of you young folks who are making sure your names are in there. And if you walk at the end of church, you can stand back here and say, Excuse me, I don't think you've signed the card. Yes, sir. You can, uh, you can like, gently encourage people to also sign those cards. Thank you so much for what you're doing, and I hope people get a chance to, to sign the cards. They will be sent out and given to people who maybe just need a little bit of encouragement. And now please rise as you are able. We are going to sing our next song about love and God. There are trees, and poof, there is a man, and poof, there are all of the animals. 
There's no disobedience here. Not yet, anyway. There's no serpent tempting anyone to eat anything. Today we see the way God intended the world to be. There is so much we can say about any story like this, the story of creation, but today I wanted to focus especially on the naming part. Names are an important part of our Sunday lessons for the next few weeks, so I wanted to focus on the names these coming Sundays. And today, the lesson is about naming and claiming. Naming creates relationships. For instance, if a stray cat comes up to you and you name it Fluffy, guess what? You now have a pet cat. You have named it. You are claiming a connection to it. We name pets, and we name children, and we name product projects, and we name teams. And we do this for a reason, because we want to feel connected to them. When we were kids, my sister used to call our old station wagon Chucky. She even named she had that kind of relationship with the car. I did not. I called it the old mobile. But she had a name for that car. Names are important. But notice God isn't actually the one who's naming anybody or anything in this lesson. Out of the ground, God made the trees. The only two that sort of have a name are really more descriptive kind of things, like the tree of knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. But they don't, they don't have names, per se. Otherwise, not one thing is noted as a named thing. God doesn't even name the man. We just have the word man. And so... We, a lot of us think of the Hebrew word, a lot of scholars believe that the Hebrew word for ground or earth, Adama, is how we get the name Adam. But God never gave him that name. It is the humans who do the naming. The man names the animals, not God. And I think that God did that on purpose. I think God wanted humans to name them so they could feel a connection with these animals that God created, because naming something is, in a way, claiming a link to them. I was thinking about the very tough task of naming a child. If you've ever been in that position where you need to come up with a name for a child, you know how hard that is. I mean, it's easier for a pet. You could just name a, a, a cat Tiger, because it has stripes. That's simple. Or, you know, fun, creative name like Sir Barcelona, or a dog, or something. But for a child, you have to name them something that means something. Do you choose a family name? Do you choose a Bible name? Do you choose a name from your ethnic heritage? Do you choose a name based on what your hopes and dreams for this child are? My husband, Lance, and I put a lot of thought into naming our kids. And our oldest, Lara, L-A-R-A, came from the first two letters of Lance and the last two letters of Sandra, because he was that was a connection of both of us. Um, if you didn't know, when you were pregnant with twins in an ultrasound, they called them Baby A and Baby B, out of lack of any other name. So Baby A became Abigail for us. Uh, we didn't like any B names. All I could think of was Bertha. Didn't like that one. Um, so we asked a relative, and she suggested Sarah for the second. So that's how we got Sarah, Abby and Sarah. And my son Eric got his name because we knew so many wonderful Eric's, including my, my maternal grandfather and a wonderful professor we had at seminary named Dr. Eric Rich. So each name was thought carefully through and in some way it shows a connection to our family and to each other. There is this connection that comes from those kind of names and we can be proud of the names that we have chosen and given. But as I was thinking about how important these names are, I have to acknowledge that sometimes because perhaps we are no longer living in Eden, the lovely idea of naming and claiming responsibility doesn't always work. There are times when names can become a burden to the point that they need to be changed. Some people change their names to reflect marital status changes, or perhaps a religious conversion experience, or maybe they, they now identify as a non-binary. Their, their, their fluidity to their sexuality. And I'm frankly still adjusting to a few of my relatives who have chosen new names for themselves and sometimes new pronouns. I'm still working on that. Due to negative stereotypes, some sports teams 
had chosen to change their names. Some African Americans have cast off the last names of their ancestors and slavers. And even some of our hymns, some of the names in our five in our hymn book, are changed to be more inclusive. Like, did you know the, the song, Good Christian Friends Rejoice, now replaces Good Christian Men Rejoice? If you were older and you didn't want to say men, now you have to say friends, you have to adjust to that. How are we supposed to understand these name changes? If naming is indeed claiming, if it's a good thing, it makes a connection, perhaps we need to also be aware that we need to be open to letting people claim their own name and choose names that are more tolerant or ask to be named something other than what they consider offensive. Some of that takes a little bit of processing instead of saying, no, it's the name I chose, it's the name I know. There, it shows great compassion to let somebody be free from that. Even in names, we're reminded that we strayed from the equality and connection of the Garden of Eden that God created for humans. We forget that we humans are connected to plants and animals through the soil or clay that God used to form all of it. We forget that the female was created as a co-worker and not to be inferior to the man. If the Garden of Eden is the world that God intended it to be, we should strive to care for our brother Earth and our sister animals, but also most assuredly care for each other, our fellow human beings. Sadly, we do not live in Eden. We live far east of Eden. We've fallen away from the loving care of our created siblings. Too often we choose dominion over stewardship, consumption over conservation, exploitation over protection. Naming and claiming is not about using up people and resources as commodities. Our call is to care for what we are connected with. We are indeed far from Eden when we fail to see the connections that God has made and when we break from the harmony of people and nature. In this idyllic place of Eden, in the world the way God intended it to be, the woman and the man were co-workers who had responsibility for tending that garden and caring for the animals they named. And we know this is not the end of the story. We have fallen short of God's plan. But any way we can, in even a small, tiny, minuscule change, find more balance between men and women, or between people from other parts of the world, or between humans and other living things, we get to take a step back toward what God intended, a step back toward Eden. And that means caring for creation is a step toward Eden. That means donating to relief, to give relief to those who are affected by things like the Moroccan earthquakes is a step towards Eden. That means using our hands to do God's work is a step towards Eden, even if it's just signing your name on a card. That is a step towards what God wanted us to be. Anytime we let go of feelings of superiority and listen to the needs of others, we are taking a step towards Eden. The lesson for today is a story of what could have been. We can and we should take steps towards recapturing some of what God so clearly wanted for us. Amen. And there are a couple of questions in here. Um, number one, what does the creation of man have to do with the tending of the garden? Just to look at that. What is that relationship? And maybe have you found peace in the garden? I know a lot of people just find such solace by working in the garden. Uh, number two, God is a creator who seeks to care for the needs of nature and people. What kinds of things do you craft or create? Because we know God as a creator. And um, I was, we had a council meeting yesterday and I talked about how sometimes I divide you up to have a little conversation every once in a while and I did not do that last week. So guess what? I'm gonna do it this week. I'm going to ask you to pick one of those questions or something else about maybe the lesson or the, or the message and just have a two-minute conversation with, with two or three people. And so I invite you now to stand up, move, and find somebody where you, who, who can talk a little bit about either of these questions or something else regarding the lesson.
you can start by introducing yourself if you don't know the person's name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Awaken us, O oh God, challenge and affirm, encourage your people to guide us to the, the vocation to which each is called. We pray for all concerning new possibilities or changing employment in all our diverse callers. Teach us to love our neighbor above all else. God, your mercy. May your peace overcome people among the people and places we admire in conflict like Myanmar, Belarus, Ethiopia, Israel, Palestine, the Church in the Holy Land, Afghanistan, Haiti, Iran, and Ukraine. God, your mercy. Yeah. We pray for our community and leaders. Bless Obama and our online mission field. For our leaders, Joe, Wes, and Brandon, and our friendship, Elizabeth and Bill, and their staff. For those who seek healing through the coast that progress offered in your coffee house. For our prayer for our first Christian church in one Michigan, God in your mercy. Yeah. Be our hope, O oh God, when we remember the Thanksgiving and this, this disciples who died in faith. May, may their trust in your promise be your protection in our hope. God in your mercy. Yeah. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayer of our heart. Trust in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. I, amen. amen. He may return to your seat.
the earth as a formless void. You created order and beauty. You connected people with you and with each other to build a people of God. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing and full compassion. You granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows in Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. 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 Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. 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 Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. 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 O God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O oh God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O oh God, most majestic, O oh God, most motherly. O oh God, our song, strengthen our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life, the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites us to this holy feast and all are welcome. You don't have to be a member of this congregation. You don't have to be a Lutheran. The gifts of God are free. Jesus invites you to this table. Come, eat, and live. You may be seated, and an usher will invite you forward to receive communion. If you prefer grape juice, take a pre-filled cup. <laughs>
having that fire that was beautiful. This is why we love you. Thank you. And now our prayer after communion. Let us pray. Blessed be your name, O God, for we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts, strengthened by this food, and send us to gather the world to your banquet, where none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just want to highlight a couple of the announcements that are in your insert for today. Um, Sunday School has returned. We're doing adult forum in the steam room, which is over here, and then down in the library downstairs is um, Miss Bailey is working with the younger kids. So if you want to come for a little bit of something extra, come at 9. Um, we, we're working on, uh, you can just see what we're working on. Uh, once again, welcome to Leah, our, our new soprano. So we're very happy and again, it's absolutely beautiful. So you might want to say hi to Leah today on, we, on your way out. Um, we have so many things going on in this planet that we're supposed to take care of. And so there are ways that you can give to help with uh, the Maui fires or the Hurricane Idalia relief, and I'm sure we're going to also see, see very soon something to help um, Morocco in the aftermath of these horrible earthquakes that they are dealing with. So I'll let you know about those, but look for ways to help, <coughs> your hands to help. Um, another thing, since this is God's Work Our Hands Monday, the, the gauntlet is down that we don't have a, a, another project besides signing the cards, but it's on you sometime this week to look for something to do to help somebody. And it might be letting somebody in front of you in line. It might be uh, calling somebody who you know probably could use a call. Or just when you're feeling yourself getting ang angry at somebody, maybe just take a beat and just take a breath and, and walk away or something. So just think of a way to do some kind of kindness this week. That is the way of, of recognizing um, God's, God's heart or God's hand on our heart. God's, what is it? <laughs> Anyway, our hands and God's work. Um, I think I did that other way around. Um, Marla Ridge is having a walkathon. There's information if you'd like to participate. That would be great if people would like to. There's also a Lutheran tent revival. We don't do this very often in the Lutheran tradition, but there is one that's coming up around Reformation Sunday. So there's information about that. There's also a movie that will be shown a few weeks before in preparation for that. So um, all that information is up in the Lutheran revival part. And um, there's also meals for students. There's information on that. And there's a, a Black Lives Matter Interfaith Coalition rally today. And that, that happens pretty much every month. Faith communities get together for that. So there are a lot of different things going on in the, in the church. And just look for a way to use your hands this week. That would be lovely. Um, and now we're sending the God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you, and keep you now and forever. Amen. Please rise as you are able as we sing our last song, When Long Before Time, the singer and the song. <laughs>